messy Jesse in the house. It's my house. <laughs> I already had an intro filmed, but I had to refilm that. That's what this is because I lost my footage due to who I am as a person. As an entity, if you will. This is going to be a reading vlog where I read books that my TBR cards have selected for me. For those who are not familiar, my TBR cards is a reading game that I play on my channel every single month where I have a deck of cards that, that is specifically designed to help me pick out my books creatively while keeping in mind inclusivity. So the books that I'm going to be reading throughout this vlog are Year of the Witching, as well as Rebel Sisters, as well as Wings of Ebony. The Get Out screenplay was also on my TBR for this video, but that just didn't happen. So we gon' we gonna just, it just, we'll see that in another video, hopefully. Without further ado, let's roll the footage. Good afternoon, y'all. I wanted to give an update. This morning has been beautiful. I woke up early. I took Akasha on a long walk and then played with her in the yard. I came home and made breakfast. I had sausage and a veggie blend and then I prepped my smoothie for the afternoon. I'm trying so hard to be better at getting vitamins and veggies into my body. I don't believe in dieting, but recognizing that I don't eat enough vegetables and trying to fix that. <laughs> So that's been really fun. And then I just got done hosting Rekka Reads on the Penguin Teen Instagram. That was so fun. I gave y'all as many recommendations as I could. I hope some of you were able to catch that. But if you didn't, it will be on the highlight, the Rekka Reads highlight on Penguin Teen's page. I wanted to give a reading update. I am four hours into the audiobook for Wings of Ebony, which is a story about a girl who is half human, half God. And she navigates both the magic realm and the human realm. She's absolutely forbidden from touching a human but when she ends up touching her sister who is completely mortal, she's her half sister, when she accidentally touches her sister the powers that be in her magical realm decide that she and her sister basically both need to die. She's stripped of her magic, she's on the run and at the same time her sister is being hunted by a gang in her neighborhood and so far I'm really enjoying this story. The audiobook does such a great job of bringing this story to life. Writing is super readable. I love the celebration of black vernacular in the text. I love how much the book is talking about community and how black communities protect each other when the police fail to protect them and the ways that people show up for each other in the hood. This book takes place mainly in the hood and I'm loving that. I'm loving all of the commentary on living in a traditionally neglected neighborhood. The beautiful portrayal of it instead of the stereotypical demonized portrayal that we get often from white authors and from the white gaze. I also loved that there was this line where Tasha is describing, I believe it was her sister, and she said her beautiful broad nose. And I just, I loved that. Every time I hear a black nose be described as both big and beautiful, it just makes my heart swell in a way that I can't explain. It is just so it's so wonderful and affirming. So I'm very much enjoying that book. And then I am currently on part two of Rebel Girls. I keep calling it Rebel Girls. It's literally Rebel Sisters. What am I doing? A major component of the story is that the government is trying to erase their war crimes by pulling all of the memories of the war 
from people's minds, it is literally illegal to remember the trauma of a war. This theme of trying to erase one's memory is significant. It's culturally and racially significant because this is what we are told as Black Americans. We are told to forget slavery and we are expected to forget slavery. Now, it's important to note that Tochi Onyebuchi is Nigerian. And so he's most likely talking about potentially Nigerian government and not just the United States. So that is important to recognize. It's important to recognize that this isn't even about Black United States politics. And the robot is officially my favorite character. Literally my favorite freaking character. There's this quote from it that I absolutely love. I am knowing how people are coming together to protect themselves from enemies like the police or bandits. I am knowing that this is being called community. The commentary on community in this book and in Wings of Ebony is just spot freaking on. I'm also very enjoying the way that the technology is built up and described. And I love that Ify is allowed to have complex feelings about Amy and Paige, these two well-meaning white women who are racially problematic but still love her and she's allowed to have complex feelings about these white women who took her in and helped her become a doctor. Also there is a beautiful allyship between black and Asian folks in this book, specifically Chinese individuals, and I think that that is especially important now when Asian lives are under attack, when Asian people are experiencing heightened discrimination. It's just absolutely disgusting the anti-Asian sentiment that is running amok and so I just really love that there is an allyship in this book. And then I mentioned how disturbing the the robot is in the sense that it will do very violent things but talk about them with an intense air of innocence and I highlighted a quote to give y'all an example of what I mean. I'm seeing the trailer and the four soldier guarding it. Then my mind is emptying and when I am waking up again I am waking up covered in blood and arm and leg and head is covering the grass like rubbish. I am not taking time to think about what happened or why I am covered in blood, and there are no more soldier, just pieces of them. I'm screaming, I'm screaming. Okay, so I'm going to uh, take the puppy for a walk because I've been filming for quite some time and Akasha is over there looking at me with the most intense yearning I've ever seen. Like I'm literally waiting for in the arms of an angel to start playing, you know, it's just, it's just freaking ridiculous. So I'll check in with y'all later. By the way, I'm not I'm not going to look like this later. This is coming right off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at all the shepherds. Yeah. Look at them. Look at them. What up y'all, Messy Jesse here to give a reading update and to do an unboxing. So I just completed the final movie watch along of Blackathon. We watched Pumsy. It is a sci-fi Afrofuturism film that is available on YouTube for free. It is a short film. It's only 21 minutes, I believe. The story, the visuals, the technology, the, the black beauty, the, I can't say anything other than to just watch it. I will leave it linked down below. Please watch it. Like literally as a favor to me, please watch this. It it was so good. And then feel free to come back to this video and comment down below with your thoughts on it because I really loved it, absolutely loved it. So I wanted to do an unboxing of this box that the publisher sent me in promotion for Muted, which is a young adult novel that is told in verse. And while I'm doing this unboxing, I guess I should do a reading update. I am like 75% of the way done with Wings of Ebony and I am enjoying it so much more now that I'm more into the story. The audiobook I think is really the way to go with it, I don't think I would be as engaged reading it physically. But I like that we're digging deeper into the magic of the story. I love that there's like a secret magical society. I also really like that the it is a 
its heart, a book about grief and being deprived of your ancestral connections. It is rooted in ancestral magic, which I really freaking like. Our protagonist had to deal with the death of a parent as well as parental abandonment. And I just really like the way that those conversations are being approached in such a nuanced way. Like we have a black girl protagonist who is very obviously grieving and working through her grief. I love that the, the story is rooted in two different places, magical realm of Gizan, and then you have the hood and what's going on in the neighborhood. And our protagonist is really torn, literally torn between her, her two worlds. Does she help the people that she grew up with her neighborhood or does she try and save this magical kingdom? I'm really enjoying it so far. And then Rebel Sisters, look, I finished part two and I DM Tochi on Instagram and we had to have a talk because when you find out, I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to say it because I, I don't want to like give any hints. The plot twist at the end of part two really freaking shook me. It, it's all coming together and I can't wait to see what part three has in store. This is what I see when I open up the box. I love the cover for Muted. It is so freaking beautiful. This of course is a book about a 17 year old singer songwriter and it is told in verse and as she's getting involved into the music scene there is a man who tries to come and take advantage of her and it's about her finding her voice. What else is in the box is this retro cassette tape wallet. Look at this how cute is it? It's an actual legitimate freaking wallet y'all. It's a whole cassette that is dope. That is dope. Comment down below if you were old enough to remember cassettes or ever actually listen to something on a cassette tape. This is so freaking cool. Oh, there's a sticker in here. That's dope. I really love this wallet. I'm going to have to figure out some uses for this because I'm, I'm into it. And then the last thing that's in this box is this wirelessly rechargeable Bluetooth speaker. That is so freaking dope. I love it. Okay, let's see. Oh, no. It's literally themed for the book. Yes, that is so cool. Yeah, Kasha, look, 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 look at the speaker. It's got a little, there's a little speaker. Okay, okay, all right, all right, Akasha, let me open it, let me open it. This is so freaking cute. Why are you sniffing my vagina? Ma'am. Okay, who raised you? Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, she heard a noise, so she's off to investigate. Look at this cute little speaker, and it says muted all over it. That is so dope. I love this. I'm trying not to look at the top of the speaker because I have pretty intense trypophobia, and that was not pleasant. I am going to end this update here. Only one day left for me to get all of my reading done, so I'm going to try and cram as much reading in as I can so that I can hopefully finish all of these books by tomorrow. I don't know if that's gonna happen because I still haven't started Year of the Witching or the Get Out screenplay, but we'll see. And I still have to finish Slay. Hey y'all, so it is next day. I spent literally most of last night reading up on, reading Year of the Witching. I got all the way to part three. I think I'm 100 pages away from its conclusion. I literally have been blowing through this book. And that was the book out of all of these books on my TBR for this video that I thought I wouldn't like because Star Love, Star Love Reads didn't like it and other book reviewers that I tend to agree with on books also strongly didn't like it. But I personally am loving the writing and I think the big reason why I'm loving the writing so much is because there are so many passages describing woods and the earth sign in me is living for the creepy magic vibes and I'm just, the atmosphere of the book is phenomenal. It is so, disturbing and haunting while also the characters are all like even the characters who don't have a big part in the story they are all still very solid and it feels like the author is able to establish characters in such a short amount of time which I'm really enjoying. I love the banter between Ezra and Emmanuel. That shit is amazing. The commentary on puritanical societies, on cults, because let's be honest, these motherfuckers are in a whole cult. When the wives get married to literally any man in the town, they have to have a sigil carved between their brows to show that they are now of the elite, that they are married and belong to a man. That's a cult, okay? That's a that's a C to the U to the L to the C. That's a whole cult. 
and I'm just really loving the whole book. It's getting very witchy and very creepy. So I'm excited to see where part three goes. I also am really enjoying the mystery that's taking place throughout the novel and slowly unwinding. I guess I should talk about Emmanuel. I really like her as a protagonist. She is both selfless and selfish in ways that I really like. Her selfishness comes in the form of her following her curiosities and questioning things and disrupting the status quo to the level that she's able to disrupt it because since she was born an outcast in this town, there's only there's only so much she can do to step out of line before she gets, you know, burned on a whole pyre. But we're getting to the part of the book where it seems like some people are going to get accused of witchcraft and burned alive. And I'm really excited for it. I just did a two hour walk with the puppy and then we and we played outside. It was great. I started listening to the audio book for You by Carolyn Kepnes and that is really freaking good. But right now I'm gonna go to um, a coffee shop to do some editing and just to get out of the house for a little bit. I'm going to edit some videos. I'm going to write some book reviews and then going to continue reading Year of the Witching and Rebel Sisters. So excited. coffee shop. I love the COVID precautions that the shop is taking. It actually makes me feel safe and comfortable being there. The social distancing was on fleek and the lattes were fantastic. So I got a lot of work done. I listened to the audiobook for you as I worked and I know this video isn't about me reading you, but I just have to say that I am geeked about it. I The audiobook is 11 hours long. I started it this morning when I walked Akasha and I already only have three hours left. I have been devouring this book. I am absolutely glued to it. And it's too damn bad. The book is much better than the TV show. Right now I'm going to drop off the orders for the TBR cards. I got back from the coffee shop and prepped the orders, wrote out my thank you cards, packaged the orders, and now they are all packed away in my bag so that I can drop them off at the post office. Thank you so much, y'all, for ordering these cards and supporting me. It means so, hi, hi, puppy. Hi, yeah, look at you. Who's your good girl? Who's your good girl? Yeah, who's your good dog? Who's your good doggy? Do I get kisses? No, okay, that's fine. Right after I drop these off at the post office, she and I are gonna go to the park. And then I'm hoping to finish either Year of the Witching or Rebel Sisters tonight, and hopefully I'll finish the other book tomorrow. So this video should be wrapping up soon. Um, maybe I should also read the Get Out book because that was also today. We'll see. I'll check in with y'all later after I have come back from the duck park. Hi, hi, Akasha. Look at you. Oh, what a good doggy. What a good dog. Yeah, hi. Hi, puppy. Who's a good girl? So I completed Year of the Witching at great detriment to myself. Look, Akasha has come to comfort me in my time of need and she's gone because I'm basically her emotional support animal, not the other way around. I have, this book, this book pulled off a stellar achievement, an achievement that few books have been able to achieve. And that is going from a five star read to a book that wasted my time in the span of <laughs> two minutes. I mean, I 
Look, y'all were here for the video. You you saw how deeply I was enjoying this book. I was invested. I was into it. Yas, honey, give me the paranormal, the witchy vibes, the earth sign, the character work, the the social commentary, the puritanical society commentary. Yes, give it all to me. And then at some point we just stopped being given and then we were just being taken from. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Who wrote? Who wrote the last 20 pages of this book because it sure as hell wasn't Alexis Henderson. We had a ghostwriter take over. Okay, somebody was possessed. Did, man, I don't. There is not enough hours in the day. There is not enough time in this video or in the next for me to talk about my issues with this book. You will just have to wait for my next books that wasted my time video. And that is where I'm going to, to explain why this is where it went wrong what ha i still feel like rod serling is going to step out at any moment and be like and you are now in the twilight zone that's literally what look 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 at how she looking she knows she in a twilight zone that's why she's so mad on this cover i i gotta put the book down yo i remember i was facetiming with starla and i was like starla i don't understand what your issue was with this book the book is so good like i'm almost done it's so freaking good you're bugging and starla was like <laughs> just keep reading just wait and see it and i was like man starla is bugging she don't know what she's talking about <laughs> why are you always right starla Who? and i remember when i started having issues i sent multiple ranting voice messages over our instagram dms and starla was like I was waiting on these messages like I don't I didn't want to I don't want to say I told you so but <laughs> I, we just gonna leave that book alone okay there's no, uh, whoo okay we're not gonna talk about her she can't sit with us um rebel sisters though five out of five stars I if I could look the next time I see Tochi, I'm going to remove his brain from his skull. I'm going to take his brain right out of his head. I'm going to hold it into the palm, right in the palm of my hand. And I'm going to lick it. That's how brilliant he is. I just, this book is great. I, I don't know. I, there's nothing that I can say that I haven't already said. The technology, the character work, the world's building, the expansion of the world's building, the social commentary, the centering of blackness and black girls, the allyship. Um, between black and Asian folks. There's just so much in this book that I really, really enjoyed. I cannot wait to reread this book someday. Now, as far as Wings of Ebony, I completed that book, really, really enjoyed it. My final rating for Wings of Ebony is going to be a 3.75 slash four stars. And the reason why it's not rated higher for me is because I know that if I weren't listening to it in audio form, that I would have rated this book lower and potentially dnf'd it because the writing just was not for me i was most definitely seeking a bit more from the writing that all being said the story was fantastic and i loved the social commentary i loved the messages and the dilemma of the characters so deeply i loved the community aspect of the book i'm definitely very happily rating this 3.75 slash four stars i thought it was fantastic this is an excellent debut and i really cannot wait to see where this author goes in the future so I did not end up getting to the Get Out screenplay book, but I am very happy that I got to read these three books in this video. If you want to see more TBR cards reading vlogs from me, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching another Bowties and Books production. If you want more content from me, you can follow me on my Instagram, which is Bowties and Books, or my non-binary book club, which is Envy Book Club on Instagram as well. But all of my social media links will be in the description box below. Stay safe, wear your mask, and I can't wait to see you in my next video.